Hey, welcome to Church on Fire Online. We are excited that you guys have joined us this morning. I'm Matt Griffin. And I am Pastor Matt Clark. And we are so glad that you joined us this morning. Yes. Hey, we are so excited that you're here with us. We would love to hear from you in the comments. We want to interact with you. So if you're watching with us right now, let us know. Say hey in the comments, tell us where you're watching from, and take the time, you still have some time before service starts, to share it with your friends. Let them know on YouTube, send them the link in a text message, share it on Facebook, do whatever you can. Send them a letter in the mail and let them know you're watching. No, just be excited. We're so happy that you're here with us and we're excited that you're excited to be with Church on Fire online this morning. Fantastic. Matt, what do you got going on after church today? Today, I, I've got caught up in the fever. Who day? Go Bengals, baby. I believe the Bengals are the team this year. I believe it. You believe really? it too, right? Well, you know, I grew up watching the Bengals, and you know, they broke my heart one too many times. I have trouble watching them. What's your prediction for the Bengals? Come on. I feel conservative prediction. I'm trying to be realistic. Super Bowl winners, undefeated record. <laughs> Wow, hold okay, on, pause okay. the stream. We have a special <laughs> hey, guest with us this I morning, our very own Pastor Nathan, you, who's going to be bringing yeah. the word. It's incredible that he's here with us. Pastor Nathan, do you have anything to say to the people? I hope you're ready. I think these two guys look great today, and I hope you're having a great time right there where you are. We know that you're not here with us, but no, we care about We, we love you. Enjoy today's service. I believe it's going to bless you and encourage you in your life today. Incredible. Right. Amen. Wow. Amen. I'm shell shocked right now. I'm in awe. A star. A star, a star a, showed a, up. <laughs> <laughs> no, star is his wife's name. That's oh, Pastor good Nathan point there. Funk. Good point yeah, there. sorry. Good point. Yeah. <laughs> but All yeah, right. the Bengals, I think undefeated record, Super Bowl winners. Okay, Matt, listen. All right, I, I love the enthusiasm, but yeah. come on. Did you know that there's only been four NFL teams in the history of the NFL to have a perfect season? Just a perfect regular season. Okay. And of those four teams, only one had a perfect season and won the Super Bowl. I, I don't hear anything that's deterring me from believing that. <laughs> I am, I'm in a church. I okay. have faith. Go Bengals. <laughs> All right, listen. I'm going to have to help you out here. Let me, let me, okay. let me, let me share with you something. All right. I'm, not, I'm not a gambler, okay? I'm not. Okay. But you know the odds? Just the odds of the Bengals winning the Super Bowl this year is 15,000. 15, zero, zero, zero. 15,000 to one chance that they're going to win the Super Bowl. So you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> there's a chance, a real <laughs> chance. The Bengals go undefeated, oh, win the Super Bowl. My. You heard it, heard it here first oh, with our very own Matt Griffin. You know, Super Bowl winners. <laughs> Do you know 1991? January, wait, January, wait, January 6, 1991. Were you even born January 6, 1991? I was uh, ripe one and a half years old. Okay, one, okay. Do you know what was going on in January 6, 1991? No, tell me. George H.W. Bush was president. Okay. Okay. Y you tracking with I'm me I'm tracking there. so far. All right. Joe Burrows, the Bengals quarterback, wasn't even born. Okay. <laughs> Home Alone. Have you ever seen Home Alone? Yeah. Ah! Yeah, okay. I've seen it. You've seen Home Alone. Okay. That just hit the theaters. Yeah. And the Bengals won their last postseason okay. I don't, game. I'm not. I'll just say it. The Bengals. years. Come on, man. Whatever. I, I, that's irrelevant. We're just so excited that you're going to be here. <laughs> hey, we see you, Regine. It is so good that you're here with us almost every week. It's awesome that you're here. We see you, everyone else. We are so excited for church. You've still got a minute left, so turn up your music. Get ready to go. Go to the bathroom because worship is going to start in one minute. God bless you guys.
God, we just thank you. All glory and honor and power is yours, Jesus. We love you, God.
to declare this yes, God, Jesus. I want you to sing it with me and really declare these words this morning
find you. I find you in the crowded thoughts. You quiet all the question marks. There is no space to love won't fill. Sing this out. I'll trade all my fear for peace of mind. All my heaviness for burdens lie. And this will be my song. You are always good. Sing it all day. Every day. 
Hey everyone, welcome back. If you're just joining us, Church Online, welcome. We are excited that you're here with us. I am Pastor Matt, and this is Matt Griffin. And we are so thankful that you're here with us. Worship was incredible. God has really blessed this house with an incredible team, so thank you, God, for that. Uh, if you're new here, if this is one of your first times, or maybe you're just looking to connect with someone, we make it as easy as we possibly can. Could you just send a text message? The word connect to 513-268-0756. It'll pop up on the screen. You can screenshot that, save it for later. Take a picture of it with your phone if you're watching on your laptop or your television. 513-268-0756. Text the word connect. And speaking of connecting, we just launched our small groups this past Sunday. And man, there have been some incredible groups. Matt, you just did one Thursday, right? I did. I did. I did. We have a new group, uh, well, a new group series called Alpha that we're offering it all over, well, all over the, the city. We're offering an online version for all of you that choose to watch church online. We have an online alpha. I went to an alpha meeting on Thursday. It was the first one uh, in person. It was fantastic. I mean, I, what else can I say? We had a great conversation with different people. It was awesome to, to really get to learn more about the foundational principles of what it means to be a Christian. And, and it was awesome. So yeah, fantastic. And then there's all kinds of other groups available too. I know you guys Incredible. have some some youth groups that you guys are doing as well, correct? Yes, yeah, we do. Incredible. We meet with youth group on Wednesday nights for junior high and high school. But there are some incredible small groups happening and young adult groups. Speaking of young adults, we have our young adult gathering mm -hmm. this Tuesday, the 21st, yep. and it is at the Coffee Peddler in downtown yeah. Harrison. And get this, don't, don't tell everybody because it's kind of a hot deal. Everybody who comes gets a free coffee drink. And sadly, I know some of you are watching thinking, I'll just pop in. Young adults only. I am so sorry. Young adults only, free coffee drink. This Tuesday, the 21st, that's two days from today, be at the Coffee Peddler, downtown Harrison. We would love to see you there, 18 to 25, young oh, adult wait. gathering. It is incredible. 18 to 25? I thought yeah. I classified as a young adult. I, it, I it's guess less I, of a young at heart and more of a birth certificate oh, thing. I'm so sorry. Gotcha, yeah, gotcha. I apologize. Okay, but, okay. but you're young at heart and way to go, you know? <laughs> way to go. We, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's okay. That's okay. We've also got some other exciting things happening here at Church on Fire. We're actually going to start a new series next Sunday called The Elephant in the Room. Awesome. It's going to be a fantastic, awesome sermon. Here's the really cool piece is it's as close to an interactive sermon as you can get. We want you to send messages through Facebook, Instagram. Let us know what do you want to learn about? What do you want to talk about? Pastor Doug is going to create these sermons based on what people want to talk about with what's going on in our world today. So remember, starting next Sunday, it's going to be a new sermon series called Elephant in the Room. And if you'd love to, if there's something that's on your heart you really want to learn about, shoot us a message on Instagram or Facebook. Yeah, and thank you so much for joining us. Maybe just join us in the last few moments. Again, welcome to Church on Fire Online. I'm Pastor Matt. This is Matt Griffin. We're so excited you're here. Speaking of Matts, we see you, Matthew Gabbard. Yeah. Way to go from two Matts to one. <laughs> Way to go joining us. And really, Dave, Fantastic. we are praying for you, Dave, praying yes. for you and your family yes. and your mother. Uh, we are so excited. Jess Topper, we see you there. It's awesome to see you. For everyone else, it's so good to see you. Thank you for joining us. Yep. And thank you for being with us at Church Online. We're going to be with Pastor Nathan in just just a moment. Uh, and Larry Stone, I see you. Um, we're going to be with Pastor Nathan. He's yeah. got an incredible word prepared for us. He popped in earlier on the live stream. You may have seen him. That's it's right. a phenomenal word. You still have time to grab your notebook, your pen, get ready. It's some incredible, incredible practical That's wisdom right. Pastor Nathan's going to be bringing. Man, elephant in the room. That sermon series sounds incredible. <laughs> yeah, he did one similar to that a, a couple years ago. But again, the topics change based solely on what the, what the church family sends in as to what they want him to talk about. So really take advantage of that. That's a fantastic opportunity. Yeah, yeah. incredible. Oh, we got some. Yeah, see Regina. Yeah, see yes. Regina's on there again. Yes. Awesome. So, guys, again, elephant in the room, send in your messages. If you're on Facebook, send a message to the church. If you're on Instagram, send in the messages. We need your feedback. We want your feedback. Pastor Doug wants to address the things that you have questions about in your faith, and it can be anything at all. So thank you so much for interacting with us and giving us feedback on that. Thank you for joining us at Church Online. It's incredible to have you guys here. We are praying for you, and we are thankful that you're joining us. 
It's so great. Matt, speaking of Elephant in the Room did a few years ago, how long have you and your family been coming to church? Oh, wow. Oh, man, it's been probably, it's been, not probably, it's been 10 years since 2011. I know. It's nuts to think about that. My oldest was a junior in junior high. Yeah. And where is she now? She's in college. She's a senior in college. Senior (laughs) in college. Wow, time flies. Hey, church, we want to know how long you've been coming to church on Fire Online or just maybe even in the building. My wife and I, seven years. Our daughter's in kids' church now. It's crazy. Man, it's an incredible time, though, to be a church on fire. God is on the move. We're so excited for the word Pastor Nathan has this morning. Yeah, we only got a few more seconds. Really, I think we got about 20 seconds, maybe, and we're going to get to hear from Pastor Nate. Oh, it's 10. This is going to be awesome. I got a little bit of a glimpse into what his message was going to be, but I won't I won't spoil no it for you. Have a great time. We'll see you after the message. God bless you guys. Let's find a seat. I want to welcome everybody watching online. We are so glad you're joining us online. All across America, people are watching online, all across the tri state. Can we, I, I hope they can hear. Everybody in the room, welcome everybody watching online. Come on, real big shout. Yeah, glad you're here. I am not preaching this morning. I had a minor procedure on my wrist. I didn't know how I was going to feel. So I had a little procedure. I'm fine, ready to go. I, I, I didn't know how I was going to feel. So I talked to Pastor Nate, who is our executive pastor here. And I love this guy. I love him. Him and his wife, Star, and her kids, they're precious, wonderful. So he's got a word this morning from the Lord. So everybody online and everybody in this room, you stand on your feet and welcome Pastor Nate this morning as he comes to preach. Wow, what a great day to be here at Church on Fire, amen? And for everybody watching online, I hope you're ready because God wants to speak to us today, amen? I wish I could take the credit uh, for the thing that I'm going to share today, but how many of you know when we listen to God, great things happen, amen? And so I want to encourage you today, fasten your seatbelts, get ready. We're going to dive into the Word of God, amen? So let's just pray. Father, thank you so much for your goodness. We thank you, God, that we hear your voice. And Lord, a distracting voice we do not follow today. So God, I am praying today that you give me the opportunity to share the things that you've spoken to me, that God, what I've heard from you, that I can share with this group of people, that it could be tangible, applicable to our lives so that we can take it and use it for your glory and your honor in Jesus' name. Come on, say amen. Say amen in the chats right there. If you're watching online, we are so glad that you are here. I do want to say thank you to Pastor Doug. Aren't you so thankful for our pastor and the things that he does for us? Amen. So this opportunity that I have to stand up here on this stage, I do not take it lightly. I take it with a lot of honor and respect for this man who has led the way uh, for the last 25 years to make this happen and to be obedient to God. Amen. And so I'm excited about that. Listen, I want to just, if I had a title for today's message, it would be this, Action Required. Turn to your neighbor, maybe say it online, Action Required. This past week, we got a phone call. We, uh, just a few, almost a month ago or so, we took our daughter, Alyssa, our oldest daughter, to be, uh, to move her to Tulsa, Oklahoma, to be at Victory College. She's in their worship, uh, their worship track there at Victory College, and we're super excited. She's having a great time there. God's opening up some doors. But how many of you know that when you walk out the plan of God in your life, that it means something so dear to you, but when you see your kids begin to step out in faith and do the things that God has for them, man, the, the eternal blessing that is for me for a da- as a dad, man, it, it goes beyond the words that I can share today. But we got a phone call from our daughter uh, this week, and I think even a few text messages, and she was dealing with an issue with her car. Anybody ever had an issue with your car? Oh my gosh. She called us and said that she had a flat tire. How many of you know that when you get a flat tire, it never happens at a good moment, right? 
And so she's texting and calling and, and, and just anxious and emotional about this, this whole thing with her tire being flat. She woke up and was going to go to work and her tire was flat and she was concerned that when she got out of work, even though she had the tire aired up, that it was going to be flat by the time that she got out of work. Anybody know what I'm talking about? But the thing of it is, she calls us, and, and I love our daughter, and I miss her dearly. And even if she's watching, I want to say I love you. But she has, she has a personality that she calls and wants our help, but she doesn't want us to tell her what to do. <laughs> How many of you can relate to that in yourself? Like, you want somebody's help, but you don't want them to tell you what to do, right? That's okay. That's a great part of her strong personality. And so we chalk that up to experience and, and we're like, man, just go for it. So we, we encouraged her. We were like, hey, on your break at work, why don't you see if your managers would let you go and, and to the tire shop and get the tire fixed and have it looked at and whatnot. And she, you know, she had a million reasons why she couldn't do that. And so we were like, okay, so Target's right behind where you work. So why don't you, if it's flat, go to Target in the back behind there, just walk there, get a tire pump and come pump it up. And so you can get it to the tire shop after work. And she had a million reasons why she couldn't do that. And so we were finally like, God bless you. We, we'll let you do whatever you want to do. She wanted our help, but she didn't want us to tell her what to do. Anybody have a child like that? Or maybe you're that child. <laughs> I raised both my hands. So we later, we didn't hear from her. We were, we were like, you know, just praying God help her. She'd never been through anything like that on her own before, right? First time for everything. So we get a, we get a message uh, later that day, and, you, and she was literally like, you will not believe what happened. And I don't know, she called you, right? She called Star and was like, I went to the tire shop, you know, at my break time, my managers let me go, and I went to the tire shop, and, and they looked at my tire, sure enough, it had a screw in it. So I was all concerned about the screw in the tire, and then how many of you know when you go to the tire shop, it's a, they're going to fix the, the leak in the tire, and then they're going to tell you you're going to need new tires, and then they're going to tell you your brakes are bad, and then they're going to tell you that your alternator doesn't work right, then they're going to say the battery, anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. They came out and told Alyssa, like, yeah, you got a hole in your tire, but you got two tires that are in the red. And in the red meant to them was like they were dangerously low on tread. And so because she was a young lady, oh, they're, they're so nice. They, they really were wanting to take care of her. They, they, they decided they were going to tell her, and, and it was true, like her, her tread was dangerously low. So Alyssa was all of a sudden concerned, and we get a phone call. <laughs> My I need new tires. I don't, I don't have the money to buy the tires and all this stuff. And we're trying to help her, right? To stand out in faith, like believe God for the thing. We're going to help, right? Like the best that we can. But we're asking her to step out in faith. And so we talked it over and, and she basically was, was like, okay, the plan is I'm just going to have them fix the flat. And then I'm going to figure out how to work this out financially. Awesome. So she did that. She told the clerk behind the counter. And what she was going to do. And then the guy nicely said, as they only can, well, can you tell me the reason why you can't change those tires today? And she was like, well, I just told you I need to figure it out financially. But I just fix the tire so that I can air it up and get it home and I'll figure it out. As soon as she said that, there was a man standing to the left of her that uh, was, a, was an older gentleman. And, and he said to her, he said, I'm going to pay for her tires. But not only am I going to pay for her tires, but I'm going to, I want you to give her the best tires you have, not the ones that you were planning on giving her. So in the midst of that, there became a huddle of uh, employees there at the, the tire shop. And so Alyssa was just like, they're trying to figure out what to do with this, you know, like. And so after a few minutes, the, the clerk comes back and he says to the, the gentleman that's there waiting to pay for her tires and says, well, that's a great gesture, and we are so grateful that you're here and wanting to help this, this young lady. But we've decided the management here at this tire shop, we're going to give her the tires. <laughs> Wait. Hold on. Hold, hold on a second. Has anybody in this room walked to any tire shop and they say, I'm going to give you a set of tires? 
it's a blessing to me when I see my children step out in faith. And it's not just the God that I serve, but now it's the God that they trust and depend on. They put their trust on him. And then when she steps out, she could have been paralyzed in that, in that parking lot at work and just crying and sobbing all night long until the next day. And that tire would still be flat. But because she went to the tire shop and she didn't even have, she just took the step of faith, fix the tire for me, please. And God gave her a new set of tires. That's something that's, that should be celebrated, especially as her father, because guess who was probably going to pay for those tires? <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Listen, today I want to speak to you about the power of God's direction requires action. It requires a response. The first point that I want to make here today is this. You may want to take a picture of this because this applies to every single one of us. Stop looking behind to see what's ahead. So many of us are dealing with the issue of what's behind us. How many of you know what I'm talking about? There's a lot of things that are behind us. But look at Isaiah 43. This is one of my favorite verses. Isaiah 43 and verse 18 and 19. It starts by saying, but forget all of that. I have that bolded in, 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 on the screen. Listen, the reason why is just a few verses of, in front of that, God was talking about the victory that he was going to lead the children of Israel in. And then he reminded them of what happened in the past that when he delivered them from Egypt, the, remember the Egyptian soldiers were chasing them in chariots and God opened up the Red Sea, they crossed on dry land, and when the, the enemy soldiers were in that, that dry land, the waters came back and it killed all of them. How many of you know that's a great feat from God? Amen? But he's saying to the people of Israel, forget all of that. Listen, I want to say to you today, the good, the bad, and the ugly of your past, forget all of that. Not to just to stop remembering, but to remember that God is ahead of you, not just behind you. The God of yesterday is the God that is today as well and forever. Amen. And God wants us to know that we don't have to look behind to see what's ahead. But think about it. What's behind you? Anybody made any mistakes in your life? Come on, raise your hand online if you think you've made some mistakes in your life. Man, I'll raise both hands, feet, everything that I have, I'm raising it all, right? Anybody made some big mistakes in your life? Come on, let's be honest. There's healing in being honest today. Listen, we can look at those failures of our past and we can say, man, I can't do it. Man, I just don't deserve anything moving forward. But you know what? The God that we serve, he did something for us that's not dependent on what we did, but it's exactly related to who he is and what he did for us. He gave us a free gift of his son, Jesus, that overcome all of our mistakes, all the things that we have messed up and could ever mess up for eternity because he's the God of yesterday, today, and forever. Come on, turn to your neighbor and say to them, you're going to make it to tomorrow. You got to stop looking to your past. But how many of you would say, and raise your hand online, use the emoji if you, you could say this, that there's been good things that have happened to you in your life. Right? Listen, don't, don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not turning this to doomsday, like forget all of that. No, use that as a milestone in your life. But listen, where God is is not behind you. He's ahead of you. He's going before you. He's making a way. He's making a way for you in the situations that you're in. And you have to go there in that place with him because he loves you and has a future and a hope for you. But we live in a day and an age that we can just get so wrapped up in the trenches and the ruts of all the negativity that's going on in our world. And if you calibrate your life on those things and not looking ahead to who God is in your life and you're 
putting your trust in him. I've been studying through the, the Old Testament this year again. And the thing that I keep seeing is that when they obey God and they put their trust in him and they worship him as the one and true God, they've lived a life of blessing in spite of their circumstances. And I'm here to tell you that if you keep looking back to the good things and the bad things, that you're going to live your life based on only what's happened in the past. But listen, if you will listen for a moment and go to the tire store, God's going to fix your flat, but he's also going to give you a set of tires as well. Are you with me? You may be thinking, well, why are you so excited today? Because this has been my life journey. Who I was without God is not who I am today, but because I made a choice that God wants to empower his direction in my life by me taking action. So, step, so point number two, it doesn't matter. You want to take a picture of this. It does not matter what direction you're headed if you're not moving. It does not matter what direction you're headed if you're not moving. Look, look at, look at this in Psalms 37. Psalm 37, 23 and 24, the Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of their lives. He delights in every detail of your life. Though they may stumble, they will never fail for the Lord holds them by the hand. Listen, the Lord directs your steps. But God can tell you, hey, I want you to go and I want you to, to, to talk to that young lady who's sitting on the bench over there by herself crying. And he could speak that and give you that direction. But unless you go over there with the, the power and the authority of God, the Holy Spirit, and, and the salvation of Jesus Christ in your life and who that, that it is in you, if you don't take that over there, that free gift that you received, you can't give away. And that's what's amazing. Do you think that God can do something that that he doesn't need you to do, most definitely he can. He created the world. But he wants, he wants you to be there. And, it, and what's, this is what I think is cool, is that it, it, if you're just standing there, I can, I can stand here and I can look at those stairs, but until I take a step, I will never go down the stairs. I will never go down those stairs. Pastor Billy Joe Doherty was a pastor from, from Tulsa, Oklahoma, at Victory Christian Center. When we were on staff there at, at that church, he would constantly be saying this quote, it's easier to steer a moving car than a parked car. Anybody ever had your engine break down? You don't go very far. It doesn't matter where you turn the steering wheel. You can turn it as far left as you want, but you will not go left because there's no energy to move you to that place. Listen to, to me. The devil, the enemy of our heart and soul, wants to paralyze you in the direction that God's given you from moving in the direction that he wants you to move in. Because there's power in you taking the action of that movement. I, I used to sit uh, in Texas. <clears throat> I met a... I met a a guy in business that uh, he worked for the Motorola company and his name was Ivy. And his job at the Motorola company was to go to the worst operating factories that were losing money for Motorola, these gigantic manufacturing plants, and to take those, those factories that were losing money and his job was to figure out a way to engineer the ideas that would bring them back into to being profitable again. I mean, no, that's a pretty difficult job to carry. Well, we met, I met him because he was working in the plant across the border in Mexico. We literally were only eight minutes from the border of Mexico when we lived down in South Texas. And, and, and I'm telling you, he came to our church because he lived stateside and he was looking for a church. So I was talking to him one day. He invited me over to their, their plant and this was like a year into him being in that plant. They were already after a year profitable. But when I went in that place, it was a manufacturing plant that had assembly lines in the whole nine yards. And I'm telling you, it was as if I could eat off the floor. That place was so clean. I was like, what in the world? 
And I would sit with him because somebody that is that smart that could take things like that and turn, in, turn them into something amazing, I want to sit with. Anybody know what I'm talking about? So I sat with him, and, and he was so busy, I, I could squeeze in maybe one or two breakfast uh, opportunities a year with him. But my whole goal was to ask him a question and just listen. Anybody know what I'm talking about? He would say some of the most profound things to me. But one of the things that was probably the most impactful that I ever heard him say was this. He said, Nate, I have sat across the table at breakfast just like this with men who have an idea in their heart. And they would write it on a napkin. It was like a business plan that they would write on a napkin and take that business plan that they wrote on a napkin in a restaurant and take it and build a multi-million dollar business. He said, but it, it, it boggles my mind that as a believer that I can also sit across the table from pastors and for, with Christian believers that have the voice of God, the direction of God in their life, and, and they can claim that th this is what I know that God said to me. And, and even if they wrote it on a napkin, can walk away from that opportunity and never do it. The God of the universe that empower us from the inside speaking to them he was he was he was just mind boggled by the fact that somebody who wasn't a believer could write something on a napkin and believe in it so much and go make a multi-million dollar business but there are some believers that are paralyzed in fear paralyzed in what they can't do or paralyzed in like i'm not good enough for this you may be thinking that at home like i'm not good enough because i can't even be in the church because i'm dealing with listen you're good enough I want to say to everybody in this room, it doesn't matter what you've done in your life, God is with you. If you've accepted Jesus into your life, that's amazing because now the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is alive in you. And when he speaks to you, that direction, that power now can be ignited by your action. And I want you to know that no matter what you're dealing with at home, that you can know that God is with you. And listen, if you've never accepted Jesus, that's okay. We're going to take care of that at the end of service, all right? But God wants you to know that you do not have to be paralyzed by the thing that he's speaking to you. So my third point is this. Get out of the box. Turn to your neighbor and say, get out of the box. I, I brought a box. Anybody ever used one of these? I want to ask the question, and even you online, write in the comments, what's your box look like? What's the thing that's limiting you from living the best life that God's called you to live? But listen, when I look in my box... Typically, there's one of these, a pacifier. Usually, there's one of these, a security blanket. For some of us, there's some of this, some bubble wrap. There's nothing else that consoles us just to pop it, right? Like, oh, I feel so much better. But some of you have wrapped yourself up in so much bubble wrap, you're smothering yourself in the things that God's telling you. Amen? But some of you are just wearing a, a helmet. Am I saying that you shouldn't be safe and you shouldn't, you shouldn't operate in wisdom and, 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 and just dealing with the reality of the things that we... Yeah, I'm saying, I'm saying be safe. But I'm here to tell you as a witness to you. That every aspect of my life, whether you're here in this, in this building or you're watching online, every aspect of my life has been grounded in God saying something to me that I cannot do. And then when I take action, something awesome happens. I can put a helmet on and protect myself from that thing. That would, I even plug my ears. I can put, I can put um, you know, thing, you know, just things to block the... the the things that God's saying in my life, I can distract myself, I can, I can suck on my passy, I can have my security blanket. I've seen some security blankets, man, that look like a little thread. But listen, sometimes you just, you're just in here. 
this is ridiculous. And in the, in the moment of your indecision of the thing that God is telling you, you being the box to him is as ridiculous as I look standing in this little tiny box. I'm a big human. But God wants you to know that you can get out of the box, but how do you do that? Think about it right there where you sit. What's, what's in your box? What creates your box? What are you trying to protect yourself from? What things have God said, has God said to you that scares you to the point where you can't do it? I'm so honored to be a part of a church where there's a pastor that isn't one of those pastors like my friend Ivy talked about that believes God for something that's so much greater than, than our own capacity. Matter of fact, put this, the graphic up. It's, it's a part of our core values. These are our seven core values. But what is this one right here? Big faith. Our pastor leads in an example of big faith. And I'm telling you, it's inspiring. It takes big faith in a, in a culture that we live in today that is canceling people and is, and is dictating and trying to, to tell you what you're doing with your life. It, it, it takes big faith to stand up and believe that the thing that God's telling you is the thing that he's going to empower you. And if you go all the way back to, to Psalm 37 that we, that we read earlier, he said that you'll never fail, but he's going to hold you by the hand. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, God is holding you by the hand. Come on online. You tell everybody in the comments, God has you by the hand no matter matter what it is that you're facing. Acts 10, 38, you may recognize this scripture. It's one of the most powerful scriptures in the Bible. And it says, and you know that what? God anointed Jesus. Stop right there. This is the place where God's power and direction was imparted by the power of the Holy Spirit. The same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, that whole thing, that same power. God imparted that into Jesus as he came from heaven to earth. Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit of power. Look, then Jesus what? Went. What does that verb went, what, is, what does it show? Action. What if Jesus came to the earth and Jesus, the Son of God, God in the flesh. God empowered him, anointed him with the Holy Spirit and power. And after he got baptized, he sat by the, the, the shore and was like, I don't know what to do now. I'm just going to sit here. There would be no power manifested in the power that God had imparted into Jesus himself. But look at this. Jesus went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God, what? Was with him. God, the promise that God gave in Psalms was with Jesus himself as he walked the face of the earth. I will hold you by the hand. To see the power of God's direction in your life is going to take some action on your part. And I hope that today that as you're watching online or you're in this room, that you'll have the courage to step up and get out of that box that's limiting you. So finally, I want to say my final point, and that is pull the trigger. Pull the trigger. And just by saying pull the trigger, it invokes that I have something with a trigger. Because I like illustrations. And Frida... Come on, give it up for Frida. I stand before you with probably the largest Nerf gun I've ever seen in my life. And I'm not even mad. But I can tell you that, you know, my dad always told me never point a loaded gun at anyone. And so I won't point it at you, but I can point this gun all over the room. This thing is loaded with darts. It's got batteries. It's got a motor. It has those things. This weapon right here, 
I hold in my hand, I can point all over this room. And the power that's inside of this will never be exploited unless I do what? The issue that we're dealing with in our, in our life, is it that we haven't heard what God's saying to us? Maybe for some of you, you've never heard the voice of God. But listen, maybe that's just because you've never chosen Jesus, the Lord of your life. But there are things in your life that when you hold the weapon, when you have accepted Christ in your life, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, we can go, whoa, we get all excited about that. But just like Jesus, if he sat beside the water and never did anything, and if he didn't go healing those that were oppressed of the devil and doing good, he, he wouldn't have had the impact that we can share today. But definitely, as you hold a big, giant Nerf gun, it spins. And when I pull the trigger, when I pull the trigger, when I pull the trigger, nothing happens. Well, that ruins that. Uh, no. <laughs> I'm sure this is operator error. Oh. Good catch. When I pull the trigger. When I pull the trigger. <laughs> oh. All right, enough of that. When I pull the trigger, the power of the thing that God's put in my hands is revealed. And the, the amazing thing to me is that how gracious of a God that from the beginning of creation, that he created man in his own image. But he said to Adam, I give you a dominion over the things of the earth. And he, he asked him to, to, to name things the names of animals and all these things. He gave Adam the dominion over the earth because God so loved the world so much. He wanted a close relationship with his creation that he didn't want to just sit up high on a throne and just, you know, lightning strikes everywhere. But as you've seen in your own life and Jesus represented in his life as God on earth, that God loves to empower his people. I wanna ask you all over this room as we just prepare to hear what God's saying to us in this moment, whether you're watching online or you're here in this room, I don't believe for the majority of us, especially those of you that are believers, that we can take this stance and maybe just saying those words, well, I don't know what God's direction is in my life, that's a box for you. Without raising your hands, if I could ask you the question, watching online or sitting in this room, if I would ask you, is the issue really you don't know what God's saying to you? Or is the issue really I'm not willing to do what God's asking me to do? I'm not willing to follow him in the things that he wants me to do. And that's a real difficult thing for us to deal with in our life. Because none of us want, whether before God or before those around us, none of us want to feel like, man, I'm not, I can't do that or I can't make it. But listen, God wants you to know. He's very good at taking those things, those people that can't do and empower them. And when they take action, they do amazing things for him. I can say that that's true for my own life because it was in 2006 when I sat with my dad on a bed who was dying from cancer and his body was laboring. And I, and I felt like God said to me in that moment, God said to me, go tell him that you're gonna, you're gonna be there for your mom. And you're gonna take, help take care of her. How many of you know that kind of direction in your life at that moment of your life is some of the most difficult words that you can, you can say because I knew what was gonna happen. But the Bible says we don't mourn as those who mourn here on earth. 
Why? Because there's a hope of heaven. I walked up to my dad's bedside and I grabbed his hand, his lifeless hand. And I said, dad, after six hours, I want you to know we're gonna take care of mom as well as you did. And immediately when I spoke those words, he slipped into eternity. The laboring of his body, he was hanging on because what was most valuable to him on this earth was even valuable in him leaving. And listen, I want you to know that that led to so many different things. But because of that, some of you have heard the story of how, I've, I, how we made it back to Ohio. I wasn't planning on coming back to Ohio. We lived in South Texas. We're there for 16 years. And God says, move back to Ohio. And then we met a crazy pastor, Pastor Doug. How could you not join arms with this man? He was going to chase me down and follow me around until he, he, that I was here. And I say that lovingly, and I, and I appreciate that about you, Pastor Doug. You, you've been a, a part of helping me reestablish the direction of God's in my life. And I think many of us can say that here in this, in this room. But I want you to know, watching online or all of you in this room, God wants you to pull the trigger. Maybe the trigger, the biggest trigger you need to pull today is you need to accept Jesus in your life. You would be a fool to think that you could sit in this room and not sense that the presence of God is here and he's speaking to you, come home. Come home. And you'll never know what one decision could do for the rest of your life because listen, I remember what I was like before I was serving Jesus and and where I am today is not it. But today, I can make it one decision to be exactly who I used to be if I want to. It can all retract back to that, that thing. We are one decision away from being who we used to be. But listen, you are one decision away from pulling the trigger for the, the hope and the future of your life by accepting Jesus into your life. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, I want, I want you just to stop and listen for a moment. Matter of fact, let's sing that song. And watch, while Lily sings this song, I want us to just reflect, what is it that God's saying to me in this moment? This is the moment where your big faith kicks in. Do you truly believe that the God of the universe is who you can trust? You can't get a new set of tires unless you go to the tire shop. 
Your intention may not to be even get new tires. You just want to make it through today. But listen, when you come to Jesus, I believe the eternal hope that you'll receive when you make one decision will transform the rest of your life. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, I want to ask this simple question. Maybe you're here today and you say, Pastor Nate, I know that I've been living my life on my own. I've been trying to do this life without making God the most important thing in my life. And I'm recognizing that I need Jesus. If that's you all over this room, would you not put yourself in the box and do the thing that you always do, but would you just right there where you sit and right there as you're watching online, would you use an emoji and raise your hand and say, yes, I'm ready to accept Jesus, whether for the first time or maybe you need to recommit your life. Come on, with boldness all over this room, watching online, just raise your hand right there where you are and just say, yes, I'm ready to pull the trigger. I'm not going to live my life the way I've lived it. I'm tired of doing this on my own. I've messed up enough things in my life, but I recognize today that I will not fail if I let God hold me in the hand. And today God was extending his hand to you as you raise your hand to him. Come on. A anybody else in this room would say, yes, I'm ready to accept Jesus. I'm going to pull the trigger. I'm not going to be afraid anymore. I'm not going to protect myself from the thing that I know I need to do. Come on. All over this room, hands are going up. I hope you're believing and, and you're, you're open to the things that God's saying to you, even watching online. God wants to move in your heart, wants to move in your heart. Jesus' name. It's very simple. How do, I, how do I accept Jesus into my life? A, B, C. I acknowledge that I need him. I believe that he died on the cross and he, he, he lived a sinless life. He died on the cross and he, was rose, he rose again for me. And C, confess what? Yeah, confess our sins, but confess that Jesus Christ is now the Lord of my life. I got him by the hand and he's going to lead me through every situation. God didn't promise that your life would be easy. What he promised you is that, that the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead and his, the power of his direction as you begin to act on it will begin to manifest in greatness in everything that you do in spite of your circumstances. So I'm asking you to do this step of faith. Would you pray this prayer aloud with me? Repeat this after me. It's very simple. Say, Father God, I recognize today I need you. I, I, I feel like a failure. I've messed a lot of things up. But today, I extend my hand to you. I grab your hand and I accept you as the Lord and Savior of my life. Come into me. Make me new. Prepare me to be a part of your kingdom and make an impact on every life that I encounter from this day forward. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Come on, can you just celebrate with every wow, person? What an amazing message from Pastor Nathan. You know, when when God speaks a word right to your heart, that was me today. You know, a lot of people call them hugs from heaven. I say it's God smacking me upside the head and saying, <laughs> Matt, come on, I'm speaking to you. So it was a great word about moving and taking action on what God's been speaking to us. So a fantastic word today. Yeah, incredible word from Pastor Nathan. Like Matt said, maybe it was a hug from heaven, maybe it was a slap upside the head for you. <laughs> but no matter which category you fall into, if you made a major life Amen. decision today. We yeah. would love to connect with you. And again, you can do that by just uh, sex texting the word heart to 513-268-0756. The word heart, 513-268-0756. We want to hear from you and connect with you. And we want to connect with you no matter what. You know, connect with us on Instagram, Facebook, whatever way you can. Yes. We really do want to connect with you, get to know you better any way that we can. And look forward to next Sunday. We're starting a new, a new sermon series called Elephant in the Room. So be sure to send your comments, send your questions through Facebook and Instagram. 
And uh, we'll see what Pastor Doug's got for next week. Yes, and we see you, Hector. We see you, Rebecca. God bless you guys and everybody else with us online. It was so great doing church with you this morning. God bless you guys.